All right, here we go. Um, so, this is last year's slide. I, uh, after grading your test, I felt compelled to add in several, several, several notes. Areas should be positive. Areas should be positive. Areas should be positive. Areas should be positive. You should always get a positive area every time positive area, okay? Now, I said that by my record, listening to the recording, I said that seven times, seven, during the lesson on X area. And yet, how many people, what percentage of people gave me a negative area on the test? 80%. 80% of the people said, yep, negative area. Uh, wow, that's, I guess I'll have to say it 20 times. So I've got three so far. So area should be positive. Area should be positive. You should always get a positive area. All right? So when we deal with Y, and it says find the area, we will make sure we get a positive area. All right? Now you need to understand there's a difference between here's an integral, evaluate it, which can be negative, and find the area, which should be positive. If today's lesson gives you an integral of y, then that's going to be a little different kind of scoop. Imagine if x is a function of y, like x equals y squared is the classic theory. If I gave you, say I had a curve that looked like this, I'll just do this, okay? Then when I throw an integral of f of y dy, that means that it's still areas of rectangles, like all integrals are, except instead of In normal area where I do rectangles that go this way and the height is f of x and the base is a really thin delta x dx. In other words, in this, the four of the rectangles go up and down and the thin width is dx, yeah? Sometimes you're going to see some that have rectangles going this way. Now in that case, this thin, thin, thin lane, that's actually dy. A thin change, d is the delta change in y, because you're going up and down. The height is dy. And the base depends on the function. So the big takeaway first is that when you see integrals of x, then you know the rectangles go this way. If you see integrals of y, if you see integrals of y, then the rect oops, then the rectangles go this way because the height is just barely changing the one, right? Now, why would you do that? Well, it's a lot of different reasons, and it helps to have both techniques, but we'll get to that in a second here, all right? Um, if it is signed area, if it says find the area, then we'll make it positive by going right minus left. Write that here. Right minus left makes positive bases for the rectangles. Now the other thing you need to take into account is that the heights have to be positive too. The heights will be positive if you go low y to high y. Here, going low to high makes dy 
or the height positive. If you use positive components, you'll get a positive area. I'll say that again. You get a positive area by using positive components. Not by doing a problem, whatever crap you throw at it, and if you get a negative at the end, you just erase it. That's not good math. It's terrible, nor will it give you any credit. Okay? You set the problem upright to come upright, and that's the key. Now, any time that you go to integrate in y, then, your, first of all, your differential dy, it needs to be there. Um, I've been cutting a little bit of slack for those of you, maybe it's uh, one out of 10 that routinely write an integral with no differential. Um, now that's just atrocious calculus, and it hasn't moved you so far because all we've been doing is that. So now it's kind of important. You need to use y. You need to show y. You've got to show this because there are a lot of problems that you could do two ways, and you need to say to the person, hey, I'm using y here, not x. All right, so make sure you're there. Um, anytime these... You, I mean, dip, sorry, anytime you're integrating with respect to y, these should be y values, not x values. You're integrating with respect to y. And this here, f of y minus zero. Now, based on that picture, <coughs> wouldn't you agree that for every one of these little rectangles, the right side is the curve and the left side is the opposite? And so if I wanted to use right minus left, that would mean the curve, f of y, minus 0. Now, I understand that minus 0 doesn't do anything, but I still want you to show this. It's just a good habit that we, I, we definitely need, right minus left, even if one of them is 0. Show it. So with that said, let's integrate here. They're going to integrate because the rectangles go this way. That tells me I'm using y as the variable of integration. The height is very small. Okay, It's a small change in y for the thickness of those lines. And the, therefore, so this, this is the first thing we identify. The rectangles go sideways. We're going to use y. If we're going to use y, that means the limits of integration have to be low to high. Using y, go low to high. So, what is the low? What's the high? C to D. Cool. All right? The rectangle bases need to be positive, and therefore that means right minus left. Here's a segment. Here's the right edge of the segment. Here's the left edge of the segment. What's the right side? Zero. Zero. And the left side? F of y. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Now, in this case, we get two regions, and so because of that, we'll need two integrals. The lower region. Now, if the rectangles go sideways, we must be using y as the variable of integration that's called. The first region, I'll call it region 1. What are the limits of integration? C to D, and what's right minus left? F of Y minus 0. Cool. The next region, I'll call it region 2. All right. Uh, do the rectangles go up and down, and therefore X, or side to side, and therefore Y? Side to side. So we use Y. The Y is the variable of integration. I'll leave a space for right minus left there. What are the limits of integration? I don't really read that, but I think that's a K. C to K. Okay? What about um, right minus left for the basis? Zero minus F of Y. Okay, cool. What if I did all this work and I got a negative 5 twelfths? Jesus, I erase the negative. That's a 2. No, you screwed up. You go back and figure out where you went wrong in the setup. Okay? Area should be positive. Area should be positive. All right, so here we go. Find the area enclosed by x equals 4y minus y squared in the y axis. Now, part of this lesson is actually pre-calculus. I know 
in Saxon especially, we don't do a lot of sideways opening parabolas, so we're gonna kind of learn that on the fly here. How do you reckon we could graph this? What do you reckon it is? What kind of shape is it? Sideways opening parabola. Positive y squared open right, negative y squared open left. So this is a leftward opening parabola. Anytime you have something that's easily factorable, you should factor it and use zeros for your guide. The zeros here are 0 and 4. Now that said, when y equals 0, x equals 0, that's obvious enough since the origin, but when y equals 4, x equals 0, does that mean I go here? No. y equals 4, boom. All right, so then we know it's a parabola opening this way on this, but you get the idea. Okay? If I talk about the area between the curve and the x-axis, then I'm talking about, and the y-axis, excuse me, then I'm talking about that shaded region. Cool. Um, now, let's, uh, I should have, for there tomorrow, study tomorrow, we'll talk about how do you know whether to use x or y. For now, the problems will say using y as the variable of integration. For reasons you'll understand more and more when we get into volume, I would like you to draw slices or rectangles. If it's y is the variable of integration, then I'm getting slices this way. Yeah? All right, cool. Now let's get into this. We're going to sum many rectangles. And because the rectangles go side to side, it must be dy. What are the limits of integration? 0 to 4, low to high. If you're using y, use low to high. What about the right minus left? 4y minus y squared minus 0. That minus 0 communicates that you learned something from me today, and you can follow basic instructions. All right, cool. Uh, what is the antiderivative of 4y? 2y squared. What is the antiderivative of y squared? Negative y squared. Negative 1 third y cubed from 0 to 4. All right. When I evaluate it at 4, I get something like 32 minus 64 thirds. When I evaluate it at 0, I get a big fat nothing. What's the common denominator? Three, and what does the problem become when I go thirds? 96 thirds minus 64 thirds, which is? 32 thirds. All right, cool. Now, uh, let's go with this one. Uh, find the area enclosed by, it says area, so it better be positive. It says find the area. Your answer better be positive. All right, so x and y axis on the curve. Y equals natural log of x plus 5. Uh, how is that natural log graph shifted? Left 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so where is the vertical asymptote? Where is the key point? So, so negative 4 is the point, and the vertical asymptote is at negative 5, yeah? So it looks like this. Wait. Are you with me? Okay. The area enclosed by the x and y axis in the curve. So where's the region that's enclosed by those things? What quadrant? 2. Okay, so it's this region, which I'm going to highlight really quick. All right. Now, notice this doesn't say use X or Y. We'll start to getting into how do you choose? Should I use X or Y? If you used X, then your slices go this way. Yeah? 
and your limits of integration are, well actually it's dx because your slices are going this way, let's start there. Your limits of integration are negative 4 to 0 because you go left to right for dx to be positive. And for the heights to be positive, we go up or minus lower, what's upper? And what's lower? Zero. Okay, cool. If we use y, if we do y, then our slices go this way, yeah? All right, cool. Now, if we go that way, then the heights are dy. The limits of integration are not quite as nice and clean. What are the limits of integration? What's the least one limit of integration? Zero. zero. Okay, I agree with zero. What about the upper? Natural log of five. Do you, do you see where we're coming from? This area ends when x is zero, and when x is zero, y is natural log of five. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Now you might right away think, well, that's y sucks, because that's terrible. And I, I understand, but stick with me. Um, what about the right minus left? What's right and what's left? Zero for sure there. And what's left? Let's call it the curve. Okay, but the curve has to be in y terms. Now, if y is log of x plus 5, then what's x? I'm sorry. If you solve this for x and put it in y terms, then what is it? e to the y minus 5. x is e to the y minus 5. Do you follow? And that needs to be in parentheses, e to the y minus 5, because the whole thing is being subtracted. That makes it the same as 0 to natural log of 5 of 5 minus e to the y. If I distribute the negative, do you agree? Do you agree? Yeah. All right. So now the question is, all right, we've got it set up both ways. So which one do you want to integrate? So, yeah, I, I, yeah the, the antiderivative of natural log, I guarantee you the first time I put this on a test, people would choose this. True? Yeah, no. Is that the antiderivative of log? Yeah, no. That's, not, that's the derivative. This is actually requires integration by parts. It's really quite complicated. In fact, you don't even know how to integrate this. You can't integrate this. I can, but you can't, okay? Um, in January, however, you will be able to. We'll get there. But the problem is that you're kind of stuck there. If you go x, then there's no one to You just don't. You can't do it. If you go y, can you integrate that? Yeah. yeah, easy to integrate. That's why it's good to have choices between x and y. Because sometimes one way to choose is which one can I integrate? I can't integrate log, I can't integrate e. I can integrate r cosine, but I can't integrate cosine. There's a lot of things that you integrate better uh, in one function versus its inverse. So what is the antiderivative of 5 with respect to y? 5y, what's the antiderivative of e to the y with respect to y? E to the y, e to the y from 0 to log of 5. When I put in 5, I get 5 log of 5 minus e to the log of 5 minus, and I'm so tempted to say, oh, 0, you don't even have that while I put it in. Yes, you do. If you put in 0, you get 0 minus e to the 0. 5 log of 5 is fine the way it is. What is minus e to the log of 5? 5. And what is minus negative e to the 0? Plus one. So your final answer is five log of five minus four. Okay. All righty. Let's talk area instead of between a curve and an axis. Let's talk area between a curve and a curve. Here. If. Oops. Did I format this? I didn't. 
Okay. So, if you are to integrate between two curves, it's still the same idea. The height is dy, but now the base, the right minus left, it's going to involve two curves rather than a zero for an axis. Same basic principle, though. So, um, this one's already done for you. Be careful you look at the correct one. Let's do this one here, all right? It's two regions because you have two different right minus left situations. So this should be two integrals. The fact that the rectangles go side to side, you we're going to use x or y as a variable. Which one? Y. Y. We're using y. All right? The first region. Uh, what are the limits of integration? C to D. You're using the y values of the region. And what's right minus left? G of y minus f makes positive bases times positive dy's gives you positive area. What about region 2? Uh, limits? G to k and right minus left. F of y minus g. Okay, cool. Now say then you found the area enclosed by x equals y squared and y equals x minus t. x equals y squared. What does it look like? Opening right or left? Right. Zero, zero. When x, when y is one, x is one. When y is two, x is four. When y is negative one, and so on. So it looks like that y equals x minus 2 is a line with a y intercept of negative 2 and going up 1 over 1. Okay? Now, um, again, let's talk about x versus y. Can x equals y squared be written in terms of x with one equation, or would it have to be two? If you put if you put this red graph in terms of x rather than y, what would it have to be? Okay, solve this for us. See, y is plus or minus the square root of x for the top half of the curve and the lower half of the curve. Yeah. Now, if I did this in x, then I would have rectangles that look this way. And in that region, I have, would have positive square root minus negative square root. You see? Until I got to this region, and then I would have positive square root minus 1. And so if I used x, I'd have two gross equations, three overall. I'd have two areas. It's a mess. It's terrible. x is bad. But if I use y, oops, First of all, because it just stands to reason, the equation is in terms of y, so it's a likely possibility. But if you use y, then our rectangles go this way, yeah? And is it always the same right and the same left? Yeah, the right is always the line, and the left, the parabola can be written as one equation in y, so it's always just right minus left, line minus parabola. In y, it's just one equation, and heck of a lot easier. So we're going to use y. Now, what do we first have to do in order to get going here? If we're going to use y, that means this. But now, what do we run into? Yeah, we need to set them equal to each other. So something like y squared equals y plus 2, if I find the intersection point. I need to know the bounds of the region. That means y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. How does that factor? y minus 2, y plus 1. So the intersection y's are 2 and negative 1. That seems reasonable to me. So negative 1 and 2. Okay. I've got the heights positive. The y going from lower to higher will definitely come out positive. Now I need to make the bases of those black rectangles 
positive, and that's right minus left. What's right? Okay, let's just call it generally the line. Would you agree? Yeah. But it's got to be y terms because I'm integrating with respect to y. So when you integrate with respect to y, all the equations have to fit into y. So the line in y terms is y plus 2 minus the parabola, which is already all set up. I follow? Antiderivative of what? 1 half y squared. The antiderivative of 2. Antiderivative of y negative y squared. Negative 1 third y cubed from negative 1 to 2. When I evaluate it at 2, I get 4 halves plus 4 minus 8 thirds. When I evaluate it at negative 1, I get 1 half minus 2 plus 1 third. The sum of the first is 3 halves. The sum of the second terms for both is 6. And the last is negative 8 thirds minus 1 third, or negative 9 thirds of 3. You follow me? Do you follow me? Okay. I don't simplify inside here and inside here. I combine like terms, which is the quickest way to evaluate them. All right. So. 3 plus 1 and a half is 4 and 1 half. Is it positive? Yeah. Could area always be positive? Yeah. Okay. okay. Find the area between y equals arc sine and y equals pi over 2x. Remember, sine looks like this. So arc sine looks like this. But the function is limited to this. So that's what we're looking at here. The curve should go here. And normally, in normal sign, we put pi over 2 on the x and 1 on the y axis. But in arc sign, it's 1 on the x-axis and pi over 2 on the y. Do you remember all those things? The slope of that line, y equals pi over 2x, it's going to start at the origin and rise pi over 2 over 1. So isn't it? Oops, that's this. Looking something like that. This should be easy. Okay? All right, so some things to consider. First of all, one region or two? Two. Um, is it, can we assume, or if we have to, prove symmetry so we could make it double one? Are those regions the same area? Yeah. They are, okay. So if there is symmetry, and you're sure of it, use it. Instead, of doing two integrals, say I'm just going to do double one. It's logical to do the first quadrant region. Okay? Uh, I'll call it region one. All right. Now, just to make sure you're starting to understand this, would you please set up the integral if you used x? And then set up the integral if you use y.
All right, we ready? Okay. Um, okay, while well, we're at it, if if I use X, do rectangles go up and down or side to side? Yeah. Up and down. Cool. All right. So if I use X, what are my limits of integration, Abby? Um, zero to one. Zero to one. Cool. And oh, sorry, I'm going to draw this. If I use X, my rectangles go that way. If I'm using X, and so the integrand, uh, EV is the integrand for X, upper minus lower or right minus left? Upper minus lower. And what is the upper minus lower, Andy? Pi over dx. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Would you like to integrate that, Mark? Exactly. No. The answer is absolutely no, because you don't know how to integrate arc sine. You haven't learned that yet. That also is integration by parts or ultraviolet voodoo. And those of you who had this care last year, you might know or remember something about that. Uh, the point is that's <laughs> that is that's not happening. Um, for you, don't know how to integrate that. So that would be a roadblock, and then you'd say, well, see what, I guess I'll have to do it a different way. Let's try Y. If I do Y, how do the rectangles go? Side to side or up and down, Dave? If I use Y, how do the rectangles go? Side to side. Cool. So I'm going to look at rectangles this way, some green ones. Still doubling it, don't forget, because of the symmetry. Um, the limits of integration, what are they, Maddie? 0 to pi over 2, because those need to be y values. True. Uh, the rectangle, uh, Kelsey, what about the integrand? How do I make the base of these green rectangles positive? Do I use right minus left or upper minus lower? I'm using right. Right. right minus left. Okay. And Jim, what is the right minus left? Uh, Wonderful. 2y over, did you say 2y over pi? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Is that integrable? Can you integrate sine? No. Can you integrate a basic form? No. All right, cool. That's the way we're going to go. Here we go. Uh, antiderivative of sine. Uh, Maggie, is that cosine or negative cosine? Try again. That's the script. Negative cosine. Uh... Mr. Dews, given that negative 2 over pi is constant, what's the antiderivative of normal old y? Uh, over pi. Over? Uh, All right, cool. 0 to pi over 2, do you agree with my antiderivative? All right. Um, let's go, so those 2's drop out. 2. When we put in pi over 2, I get negative cosine of pi over 2. Uh, <clears throat> minus 1 over pi, pi squared over 4. Do you agree with that? It's pretty gross, huh? Uh, when I put in 0, I get negative cosine of 0 minus 0. Let's do a little bit of evaluating. What is cosine of pi over 2, Tim? Uh, cosine of pi over 2. 0. And when I multiply negative, negative 1 over pi times pi squared over 4, pi drops out. So that leaves me with negative pi over 4 there, yeah? All right. And what about cosine of 0, Corey? Uh, that's 1. So minus a negative 1 is plus 1. Overall, then... <clears throat> I get something like, I guess I could combine like terms, but I'm not going to get 2 minus pi over 2. The answer to area question should always be what? Yeah? Positive. Is 2 minus pi over 2 positive, Monica? Yeah. It is. Pi over 2 is about 1.5-ish. I think we're in safe territory. All right, we good? Okay. Um... Again, choosing between X and Y. We've talked several times now about one of the deciding factors is which is easier to integrate. Another deciding factor is one integral versus two. Um, let's go to a graph of this. Y equals root of X 
minus five. Uh, Sam, what does the graph of that look like? Mm -hmm. Right side? Is that inside the root or outside the root? I don't have that. You don't have that? Oh, sorry. I think I changed it. Oh, sorry. I changed the problem, obviously. Yeah, but you know that. Which is? And then it just talks to the graph, so it just shows the other side. No, that's not that good. Alright. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. My eyes have changed my notes for some reason. Sorry, no wonder you didn't know what I was talking about. My problem is one. Um, so y equals square root of x, never mind the graph of this, you should know. And negative x plus 5, that is a line with a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of down 1 over 1, yay? Yep, is that right? Okay, cool. Uh, be careful here. Very common mistake is people identify the wrong region. There are two enclosed regions. Depending on if they say use the x-axis or the y-axis. They're saying use the x-axis. So not this region. This is the region they're talking about right here. That's the one they're interested in, yeah? All right. If I draw, if I use x, then how do my rectangles go? Up and down or side to side? Up and down. If I go up and down, How many integrals will I need? And I understand you say one because it looks like one region, but how many different upper and lower situations do I have? I have two different upper and lower situations. So although it looks like one region, it's actually, if you use x, it's two integrals, two. What if I, instead, I use rectangles that go this way? Is that always the same right and always the same left? That's one integral. So which is probably going to be less work is y. So would you write if x two integrals, if y only one? So we're going to go y, which means start by putting dy off to the side. Uh, we need to find the intersection of the two because we need that high point in the region, yeah? Uh, root x equals negative root x plus 5. I know that these are x's, but it's easiest to find the intersection. Actually, it's probably about the same either way. You could square both sides. I don't, do you want to keep it the way it is and use x and then find y, or make it y and find? Nah, screw it. Let's go six minutes. Fine. We're, we're finding the intersection points, but then we're going to need to find the y's in a second, right? So how would you solve this? Square it. Maybe it would be better to use y. Let me think. Okay, so let's use let's use y here. Y squared equals root or just x, and x equals what? Five minus y. Yeah. So if I look at y squared equals five minus y, that's not factorable. That sucks. Maybe that's why I changed it. So y squared, well, I guess not everything's factorable. I sh should be able to solve a quadratic. Use a calculator. It, oh, it says use a calculator? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> God forbid we should have to use a quadratic formula. All right. Um, actually, we're running out of time. That's probably good enough. Um, you should be good. Tomorrow we'll do any questions on your questions on 90, not 960. Hang on to 66 until tomorrow. Tomorrow is just an exercise this day, so it's not really a lesson. We can do questions tomorrow, okay? Have a good day. So long, farewell, au revoir, happy to say hey. Um, this room, yep. Um, I was wondering if you had 65 and we lost it. Uh, I could just uh, 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 yes, I do.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.